Dr. Jock Ellison from Otago. Tell us about your background. Uh, Terry, I've got a background in agricultural research. I was um, a scientist and director of the Invermay Research Centre and responsible for the, all of MAF's agricultural research for the Southern South Island from 78 to 86. Uh, after that time, I've been involved in agribusiness, um, in importing breeds of sheep from various places. Um, in fact, I've had a fair bit to do with all the main breeds of sheep which have come into New Zealand and are the main reason behind increases in productivity so dramatic in the sheep industry since 1990. What effect is the ETS going to have on our New Zealand farmers? Well, first of all, from rough calculations, uh, it's about a $10,000 tax from the date of implementation on the average uh, sheep and beef farm and probably double that for dairy farming. But it will increase by 1.3% per annum uh, above that and at full implementation probably uh, 20,000 uh, 20, sheep and beef, 40,000 for dairy. Um, I might say, uh, however, National's uh, proposed ETS uh, is only about a tenth as big an impost as, the, as what Labor were considering. Mind you, the implementation of it is still uh, uh, totally ineffective in my view. But of course, we need, and we need to remind ourselves that farmers will start paying from 1 July this year the same as the rest of us are going to have they to pay. They certainly will. They'll pay for electricity and they'll pay for transport. Um, even if they're only paying a very small amount uh, for animal emissions, etc. So yeah, it's from July 1, correct. Um, and the base year for the, for the uh, measuring these uh, emissions was 1990. Um, what's happened in the farming world since 1990 in this regard? Well, since 1990, the total number of stock units run in New Zealand has declined uh, by about 11.5%. Um, big decline in sheep production and an increase in dairy production. The emissions have gone up about 9.5%. Uh, but in fact, even though, take sheep, even though the numbers have declined, 40% less sheep, we're actually producing more lamb meat, the efficiency has gone way, way up. Uh, and also in the dairying, dairy farming efficiency has gone up as well. Uh, our emissions per unit of production is much lower now. Uh, than it than it was in 1990, and in fact, um, it's not all that much higher than in total than it was in 1990. So this is really going to put our farmers uh, at a an extreme disadvantage when they come to sell uh, our sheep and beef, uh, sheep meat and beef uh, and dairy produce around the world. It certainly will. I mean, we we are the only people, in, uh, including agriculture. In an emission trading scheme. In fact, we'll be the only people with a with a, an effective emissions trading scheme from July, is my understanding. We rely on agriculture and primary production. Um, so, what's the real point of uh, putting a leg rope on, if you excuse the dairy farming term, on, on our agricultural industries? We want them to be competitive. Uh, the world's population is increasing. We want to feed the world. Uh, why hobble out? Our industry, which is the mainstay of the New Zealand economy, it simply doesn't make sense. We're told, or the government has told our farmers, that uh, if we don't have an ETS, that they'll have problems getting access to our main markets. Got any comment on that? Yeah, I think uh, that's rubbish in actual fact. We get, we get this sort of comment in relation to being clean and green, etc. But in fact, our products are in high demand worldwide. If we take lamb, it's a high quality... It's a high quality, very high quality niche product. Uh, dairy products are um, high quality commodities uh, which are needed for feeding the world uh, worldwide. I would suggest most people that are looking at dairy products wouldn't have one clue about how we farm our animals and how clean and green we are. But in any case, uh, the countries which are our main markets, they don't include agriculture in their, their uh, plans for uh, emissions trading with, with uh, ETS? No, they don't. And in fact, those countries have, have higher emissions per unit of production than we do, including uh, all of the transport to market. And the other thing is, if we're talking about CO2, it would be a good, great thing for us if we uh, had an increase in the CO2 in the atmosphere because that's what plants feed on. 
And in fact, if we double the CO2 levels from 385 to, to 790 parts per million, we'd get a 30% increase in pasture production, which would be wonderful for agriculture, animal agriculture, and cropping. It would be wonderful for feeding the world if we're going to have food shortages as the population increases. Finally, um, we all breathe in uh, oxygen and emit CO2. And uh, as we breathe out, we're breathing out 40,000 parts per billion of CO2. So the easiest way to start lowering the levels would be to stop breathing, but that's hardly practical. Stopping breathing is probably quite a good strategy. We're worried about CO2 in the atmosphere, which incidentally hasn't been shown to have any, any or, or minute effects on global warming anyway. Bloody ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. Right, where does methane, I read about methane uh, in relation to farm, farming and farming animals, where does methane fit in? Well, methane is breathed out by ruminants, which are all, our, all of our animal agriculture, I, I say, except pigs and chickens. Uh, our animal numbers have fallen quite dramatically since 1990, and, but yet, and methane levels are uh, stable or, or down a bit. But the, 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 uh, during that time of animal numbers falling, the levels of methane in the atmosphere is going up. So it's hardly what you'd expect. But what we tend to forget about too are the costs which don't go into the assessed costs uh, to farmers. We've got a huge build-up in bureaucracy. We've got policy analysts all over the place. We've got them in the Ministry of the Environment. We've got them in, in, in MAF. We've got bureaucracies, etc., etc. Um, in an entirely different area, forestry, you want to uh, try, and, and we have a forest, 55 hectares, which we're milling at the moment, and to apply um, for carb the appropriate um, bureaucracy, it's very difficult uh, to go through, go through all of this stuff. Uh, quite incredible. In primary industry, with very good advocacy, the uh, Kyoto forest owners have now got their own carbon credits. So they're quite happy with an ETS because they want to uh, trade in carbon credits, etc., and see that as an opportunity. So what we have, we have part of the primary industry forestry saying this is great. The rest of the primary industry, uh, dairy, sheep and meat, sheep and beef and wool, etc., saying we don't want a bar of it. It's making us totally uh, uncompetitive, which we don't need. Um, so we've got, we've got factions in the primary industry who will beat each other's throats over this, put there by silly policy. Oh, it's bloody crazy, isn't it? Oh. Oh. Well, if I was a farmer, and we know that farmers have traditionally voted national, I would be thinking about where I would cast my vote in the coming election if the ETS is introduced and New Zealand uh, is the only country in the world to penalise its farmers in this way. I would agree with you, and I think Terry, like you, have been a, a national supporter all my life. But if we're talking about an impost uh, on agriculture making it uncompetitive when in world terms we're going to have no effect at all, and in fact there's a, uh, major questions on whether global, global warming is an issue at all, um, in fact I think it's virtually a non-issue. The world is a warmer place, is much better much better to be than, than uh, if it's much colder anyway. Um, not only in agriculture though, this ETS is going to affect everybody. I mean, I wouldn't be uh, too keen on two or $3,000 per annum just as extra money going, going on to every family in this country. It's the same in the UK. I was reading some stuff uh, on the net in the last week. Uh, two, 260 to, two, to 300 pounds per man, woman and child. Uh, in the UK. For what? It's not going to have any effect. 